Hello, 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 Alan here. Coming at you today with a kind of a Portland video, but a, a cool video and a tag video at the end. Stay tuned for the tag. I uh, I met Greg from another Bibliophile Reads. I met Greg and his wife, Chris, today. We met at Powell's uh, downtown, and then we walked across the street to Sizzle Pie and had a uh, dinner there, and we did a tag video outside. We had margaritas, and... Um, so, who, we mentioned a few booktubers in here. I know I mentioned Dane Cobain once, but we mentioned a lot of books, so stay tuned. I haven't edited it yet, so stay tuned. Thanks. Hold up, booktubers. I'm about to go meet um, a fellow booktuber at Powell's Bookstore. His name is uh, Greg. Him and his wife are down from Washington, so I'm going to go meet him. His channel name is uh, Another Bibliophile Reads. Uh, go check out his channel. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to ambush him in Powell's. Like I'll get out at Powell's and text him. And he'll say, yeah, I'm on the third floor. So I don't know if I'm going to go up there with my camera going. You know, hey, Greg. Bleh! Or just go in there normal. Um, we'll see how I feel in 15 minutes. I just take a streetcar down there. And I'm uh, at Powell's. So um, we're off. Well, I just got off the streetcar and I'm at Powell's. You don't need our masks at Powell's. So, nice sunny day here in Portland. It's about, I think it was 86. That's the uh, supposed high. So, I decided not to ambush him. I'll, I'll text him because uh, Greg's with his uh, wife and, you know, she might not want to be on booktube. But we're going to go out to uh, eat somewhere and probably video there. So, let's go to Powell's. Nice day. It's Powell's 50th uh, anniversary. They, they opened in 1971. Right across the street is Sizzle Pie, a place I want to take Dane Cobain to because they have some great vegan options over here at Sizzle Pie. So, this is Burnside. I used to live down there at Burnside and Broadway. Lived down there for like three years. And I, my apartment had a fire escape on it, and the parades would go turn right in the corner and go way down Burnside. It's great. I have some videos in the playlist, my Portland playlist, hello. So, uh, I forgot my water, damn it. Anyhow, be right back. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Yes, I'm really into this book. And I'm waiting for this to come in the mail. This is uh, the third and fourth book. So, yeah, getting into some Gene Wolf. Greg's over here. Are we both in there? I don't think so. Yeah, now we're. All right. Okay, so are you ready to record? Mm hmm Okay, I have three... Are you recording? All right. I have three tags, topics. So the first one is cities. Second one is church and state. The third one is books and movies. Which one appeals to you the most? Books and movies, because they'll beat me at church and state. <laughs> okay, books and movies. Okay. So... Um, Question one, what is your favorite film adaptation from a book? Das Boot. Ah. Yeah, the, the, the German movie, um, or the German submarine. I did try to read the book in the 80s, and the, the book was not as good as the movie, and I did not finish reading that book. Okay. I've but, only seen the movie, The Boat. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize there was a book to go yeah, with there that. There was. Okay. Um, um, it's, it, it's in the top three of my, my all-time favorite movies. 
Uh, mine would be, uh, we were just talking about it. Remember? Ed Powell's? We had a lot of, we, uh, we talked a about a lot of books. <laughs> mine probably a Clockwork Orange. Oh, yes. Okay. Greg was telling me there's a drop chapter from mm -hmm. the American, I didn't know that. So I'm going to have to reread that. Okay. I've never seen that movie. I have seen Das Boat. That, it, that was an excellent movie. A very depressing. But Greg loves depressing everything. So, um, what movie made from a book pissed you off the most and why? Can I say that? Yes, you okay. can. Um, the movie that pissed me off the most was Blade Runner. I love the film K. Dick. I love K. Dick. I would have to say the ending of Blade Runner is perhaps a candidate for the all-time worst ending of any movie of all time. <laughs> okay. And I guess we can spoil I mean, everyone must have seen Blade Runner by now. And that's, I saw it originally when it came out in the theaters on opening night. And basically the, the theory, the idea is that um, the, the character of uh, Harrison Ford is hunting down androids and he falls in love with a girl and turns out the girl is an android and androids are only supposed to live 10 years or 15 years. Boo hoo hoo, the love of life is going to die. At the end of the movie, it turns out she's a special android. She's not going to die after all. Mm. And no, just have her die. I can't think about one that made me mad. I know a lot that I, I like the John Irving adaptation of this book. Streetcar. Yes. Yeah, Portland Streetcar. Ah. I like uh, his adaptations, you know, like uh, uh, Cider House Rules. I thought that was a good adaptation from the book. I'm waiting for them to do uh, a widow for one year. Ah. Uh. Yeah, okay. I thought sometimes, you know, people make a movie from a book that so deviates from the book oh, that yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> like, I can think of um, Under the Tuscan Sun, which is a beloved book of mine. And, um, and I actually liked the movie, but there was almost zero correlation between the movie and the book. I mean, it was just the thinnest sort of link between the two. Basically, a woman gets a house in Italy, and apart from that, like everything's completely different. You don't have to tell me; I'm just talking. <laughs> but um, I'm always a that made me up. mad because I'm like, you know, false advertising. <laughs> oh. So um, anyway, so I thought that would be an interesting topic. Like, what, like who made well, a movie that you're like? Sanctuary. Even we're doing Sanctuary in yeah. Walker in August. Uh huh. And so with Lee Remick, that that takes some odd liberties. And then I just um, watched Sense of Sensibility. Uh -huh. like, he did a video about how she was pretty, uh, Emma Thompson wrote the script to that. And uh, she was pretty true to the book. I yeah. mean, word for word, some scenes. Yeah, yeah, true. She, they stuck pretty close. I guess if you want to get some Jane Austen fans mad, that's when you start going off script, right? Up the oh, book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. If a movie was being made about you and your life, which actor would best play you? Uh, I, I, I've, I've gotten that uh, people say I look like Jeff Daniels. Okay. Or, or Martin Mull. Martin oh. Mull. Yeah. I don't think I look like anyone. Well, it doesn't have to resemble Richard you. Dreyfuss. Just like Richard, personality Richard, Richard Dreyfuss. Richard Dreyfuss. Kind of. Okay, maybe. Sort of, yeah. A little sort older, of see but it. Okay. the goodbye girl if you grew a beard. Okay. But okay. it's, you know, it, it's basically movie. who would you want, the act, what actor would you want to play you? Yeah, Greg, is it Johnny you Depp? Know, <laughs> you know, no, I think, um, I don't think so. he's a little older. He's good actor. Oh, true. Yeah. That guy that was in... Um, Dustin Hoffman would you play? See, I, I don't see enough movies to know the contemporary actors yeah. to pick me. Now, if you were still alive, Philip... Seymour Hoffman. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good one. That's he would have been a good one. He would have been a good See one. See that theater? That's a theater over there. Yeah. You get uh, cocktails there. Beer. Okay. On the corner. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. He says as we're waiting for a margarita. <laughs> yeah. Got to have a margarita on a hot day. Mm-hmm. 
What book would you most like to be made into a movie and why? I'm gonna say I, we were talking about Gene Wolfe again. If they could possibly make the the Shadow of the Torturer series, mm -hmm. maybe. I don't think they could do it as a single movie. No. I'm not sure what. I'm trying to think of all the the ones that I like. I was about to say George Perec's book A Void, but that would make a terrible movie because it's about not using the letter E, and you couldn't translate that into film. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't okay. think of anyone I'd want to see. Maybe um, it will come to you later. Okay. Margaritas for Craig. Okay, pause. It's okay. Cheers. Cheers. Um, you're recording your oh, wife. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, he can edit it. Or not. Yeah, yeah. Edit, edit my... <laughs> okay. Next question. If you could be any of the following careers, what would be your first pick? Writer, editor, agent, actor, director, or producer? Wow, that's a lot of choices. Producers, you have to have money. Well, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break with yours and go cinematographer. Okay, yeah, I didn't list it, so yeah, you could be a cinematographer, okay. That's, you can be highly creative and inventive, but you don't have to go through all the producing or writing. Okay. Well, I've been an actor, and uh, ah. I haven't acted lately. I was talking to somebody about getting involved in community theater out here. Uh -huh. Now, there's an Irish theater, uh, Corin that I'm involved with, but all I do is like uh, pass off flyers and I usher and then I see free shows. But I'd like to get back into acting. I like theater, e even stage managing, uh, painting the sets, like that. Uh, yeah, Greg and I had season tickets to the Seattle Rep for a few years yeah. and we just love theater. That was a late in life thing. Like as a younger person, I wasn't interested in the theater, but now I just well, think it's awesome. Before I married you, I had season tickets to the Folger Theater in Washington, D.C., the Fol Folger Shakespeare Theater. Yeah. Oh. And they did three Shakespeare plays a season and then one non-Shakespeare play a season. And I was on that for like three or four years. Yay! Another show? Okay. Yeah, okay. Call on your pizza. Uh, you want to hit pause? Yeah. Let's hit pause. Where is it? Okay. We just finished uh, pizza, so now yeah, we're going to get back to the cake. Yeah. <laughs> just finished pizza. Have some pizza residue. Um, so, let's see. Who are two writers? Or actors you'd like to have dinner with? Living, dead. I, yeah. whatever. It could be anything. Well, you know, I'm tempted to say Joyce for sure, but I'm not sure I'd like what we'd have for uh, on the menu. <laughs> He's known for well, in his poor days, he he ate uh, rabbit lung soup. Oh, oh, and there oh. Is rabbit lung soup. It was the cheapest on the menu. Oh. It could eat spider webs or... That just sounds, sounds horrible. Horrible. Now, the, the problem is with meeting people is that sometimes the writers you really admire are not going to want to be people you want to sit down and have a conversation True. with. Yeah, like have dinner with Bukowski. I, uh, he wouldn't be sober, but what I, I heard. I gotta think, would it be enjoyable to sit down with William Fox? I don't know enough about him personally. I think he was a pretty good host. Yeah, yeah, he had that southern yeah. hospitality. Sure did some whiskey. Sure he would. Talk whiskey about makes everything better, right? Uh -huh. Whiskey makes everything better. Now, I, I have 
sat down with an author. The author is William T. Goldman. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow. I've actually met him a couple times because I go I go to his book signing, and after a book signing, he says we're going out for drinks at Sudden to the Pub, and we sit down. And for the most part, he's sitting at another table for me, but one of the times he sat right down next to me and had a brief conversation. And he's just a normal guy, you know, from at least the, the brief encounter that I had. You know, the only book I've read by him so far is Horse for Gloria, that then, yes, back in the eighties. That was that was actually the first book that I read by him. When I first came out. Mm-hmm. And he, he he just has this huge repository of knowledge. And he's an amazing researcher. Yeah, what's that? Father and Father and Sons? Fathers and Crows. That and Crows. That is probably my favorite book by him. Followed by the Dying Grass. And both of those are huge thousand page novels. Yeah, big books. Big books. You like big books, right? <laughs> I cannot lie. Big hard books. You would like Volman because he, I tried to read a Roman Volman because I was trying to understand like why does Greg like this writer so much? I'm going to read a book, and I think I made it to page three, and I'm like, no, oh. I, not for me. I don't really get it. <laughs> well, he's going to be wanting to read J.R. too now. I've never read any Gaddis. Yeah, yeah. The, it was just an amazing. Like I said one of the best books that I've read in the past ten years. Big books. So. Now I I did read it as a in a paperback book and an audio book at the same time. Yeah, that's how I would do it. And it's it's um, the audible or uh, the audio book narrator is probably done one of the best narrations of any. Of book. audible. About the best audible audible. I keep saying audio book narration that I've heard. But is it on audible? It is only on audible. Oh okay, I'll, I. I... I'm with them too. So, so, so I, I would, I, and I, if you were to do it next year, I would reread it. And we could, we okay. Could, we, we could do. We'll a, do that. We'll do a buddy read sometime next year. On okay. JR. What's the buddy read we're gonna do? Uh, Adventures of Cat, Cavalier and Clay um, by Michael Chabon, yeah. probably November. Because we didn't, neither of us have read that. So, so okay. And we can invite more people. I think a lot of more people might want to do the Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. That'd be a good group. Okay. And this uh, would be a good place to stop on my phone. Okay. Do you have more questions? Go ahead and stop. No, no, you have more no, questions. No, it's okay to stop. All right. Okay, we're going to stop this and switch to uh, Greg's okay. channel. Okay. All right. Uh, another bibliof- bibliophile read. Well, I'll link it below. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Thanks for Chris. watching. Thanks, Chris. We forgot to tag people. So this is uh, the books and movies tag. You're going to tag? Uh, uh, Jim at Jim Books Reading and Stuff. Or Books Reading Stuff. And Stuff, Jim. So I'll tag uh, Christina at uh, Knitting Books, etc. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I might tag a few other people after I edit this too. So, okay. Ciao.